And today, there's this. Rather, there's the remains of this. Yesterday, it was... It was... It was... Well, I'm not quite ready to talk about yesterday. I mean, it's not as if I hadn't made it clear to Cody. It's not as if I hadn't said, Cody, you are never, and I mean never, to return to this house again. It's not as if I hadn't said, no, Cody, this house is neither your home nor your refuge. This is my house, my castle, my sweat and lifetime's toil. And whatever hard luck story you may or may not have concocted to tell me this time is not I repeat, not going to have any purchase. Because I, Cody, am on to you. And don't you go pulling a face like you have no idea what in heaven's name I'm talking about. Because this, precisely this, or rather the remains of this, disgusting this, is what I'm talking about. To tell you the blunt and honest truth, I'm completely and utterly bewildered by the whole Cody situation. Have been from the off. I know, of course, I don't resent a young man striding out into the world and acting on his own instincts and inner lights. I mean, what striper father would I be if I resented him that? And no, I have neither wrath nor rancour that he never saw fit to have much to do with me or his late departed grandmother, who, it must be said, never did quite accept him or his mother with wide open arms. But hers were different times and different attitudes. And no, I do not applaud them, but one has to acknowledge their existence. And yes, I freely admit I had some wide interior obstacles of my own when first I came to know the truth about Cody's mother. And yes, I am not ashamed to say that we, Momo and me, did indeed have our occasional problems of perspective in the early years when Cody was just a babe in arms and never gave any substantive indication as to his later truths and appetites. But before you rush to judgment, no, I do not blame either his mother or myself for the creature that Cody is. No. No, I don't. Momo, my long lost Momo, was never an obvious candidate for a boy like me, raised on white bread and immaculate table manners at the latter end of the 1960s. Momo, though, Momo was the freedom of the age. She was bells in the morning, she was flowers in the shafts of rifles. And if her bite was deeper than the average West London girl's, then that, for this merry prankster, was a feather in my crimson cap, a platinum star in my copybook. But what, you may ask, what, oh what, did a wild girl like Momo see in a boy like me? Well, how to say this after so long accurately? My intelligence and beauty, certainly. 
the limitless ease of my movements when dancing to the exotic San Franciscan rhythms of the Jefferson Airplane. The lightning of our attraction when first I saw Momo sitting on that swing in Boston Manor Park. The imperial nature of our lovemaking which scandalized as much as it terrified my tight, respectable neighborhood. And then, yes, of course, when after seven short months, and to the utter consternation of my mother, who had lost her husband, my father, some years before to a seafaring accident, our Cody was bundled into the world, mouth wide and utterly silent. As delighted and truthfully overwhelmed as Momo and I were by our Cody's arrival, it must be said that my mother, in whose house we were then residing, took something of an issue to the silent Cody. And his mother and father's quickly resumed and enthusiastic coupling. I knew what she was thinking, of course and I can still see her eyes dance with nothing short of criminal victory. When Momo, after seven long years of trying to transform herself into something more privity and hedge-like, finally succumbed to her forest nature and one day disappeared back to the wild which had spawned her. Rather than act on her true instinct and rip my mother's head off from her shoulders, which she could quite easily have done at the zenith of any lunar cycle, with all the gusto of the creature she was at heart. And me? Well, I was... I was, what was I? Brian Fowler. I was too much a product of those neat suburban terraces to reassure my Momo that Mother's constant and sustained criticism of all that Momo was reflected far worse on Mother than it ever did on Momo. Beautiful Momo. But then, one day, over a moment's delay in sorting Cody out for school, my mother announced, with us all standing together in the hall, that she did not think Cody quite right, and certainly not the sort of boy this neighbourhood was customarily accustomed to producing, and she was sorry to say so, but in all honesty she could not contain what her heart had been shrieking at her for years, and... and that, as far as Momo was concerned, was bloody that. And she looks right at me. For something. Anything. And after the longest moment, I say, It's not as if Cody's harming anyone, is it, Mum? It's not as if Cody's any kind of actual threat. And Momo's eyes widen, and suddenly I'm drowning in a lagoon of her disappointment. But I have said my piece, Momo. 
and my peace is my peace is my peace and before another breath is drawn and from apparently out of nowhere momo growls the growl of the wild the growl of the groves the growl that ended momo's flirtation with the comforts of northfields the growl that that sent her scampering home never looking back leaving little cody motherless and me well me alone to do the best i could And that's how it was, until the day that Cody left, to discover, I suppose, the truth of his nature. No matter the cost to me, who had made every sacrifice and raised him in as regular a way as I could, until eventually striking out on our own, two pioneers lighting out for the territory and finding a home. This home. My home, as far away from a forest as it was possible to be. Our home by the sea, our castle and keep, our little pocket of safety. Which you, Cody, abandoned and betrayed. Yes, you did. And no, I do not want to even contemplate the extent of your crimes and dreadful misdemeanours. Or oh, the thought of you on your knees, face up to a frosty la luna. I disowned you once, Cody, and I shall disown you again. Because I will not be held accountable for your actions. No, sir, not me. I am, and always have been, an innocent in all of this. But then, there's yesterday. And you, arriving sometime in the thick of night, demanding that history repeat itself. And I can only suppose that you left the remains of this as some kind of bloody nourishment for, for, for you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Grandad's talking to you. Shall we see what Daddy left you, shall we? Or would you rather I sing? As Momo, your grandma, liked me too. As I sang for Cody, your dad. Out there somewhere in the night, exploring all the dreadful extremities of his nature and leaving all the love to one who actually understands what it is to accept, to accept as I have accepted, to accept. <laughs>